Hey, so our FireNote application is going to store images in a cloud uh, file system uh, provided by Firestore or Firebase, it's the, the storage part. And so what I wanted to do uh, is just show you that part of the code uh, in isolation because it's a little different from storing things to the local file system. So, um, you know, you'll see the um, directory breakdown for fire uh, note has a couple of extra um, classes in, in the base um, directory, including an authentication class that you, we use to authenticate uh, to Firestore. And it looks a lot like uh, what we did previously. And it's also got this storage um, class, which you know, I, I could have called Firestore. Well, I, I, I should not have called it Firestore. I should have called it Firestore storage Firebase storage, and that's why I just called it storage because enough is enough. So let's take a, a look at what's going on in storage. So we already saw what our data model looks like, and our data model looks like a bunch of uh, files in a single directory. And so uh, as soon as we start up, we have a global um, singleton that we can get an instance for, for Firebase, and we can sort of open up our um, uh, directory, our images directory. And so we are going to have this uh, photo storage reference sort of available to us uh, as, as, as we operate. Okay. And uh, let's see, I mean, let's up, upload. Um, uh, yeah. So probably the, the, maybe the easiest thing to look at first is how do we delete something? So we, just like uh, in notebook, uh, we name things by uh, timestamp. And then uh, the note sort of gave us this list of, of file names and the, the file names had the timestamp in them. Similarly, this picture UUID is sort of the file name. So it's just a string, it's the file name, but we are going to tell the photo storage, the uh, storage reference, which is a reference to this images subdirectory in our uh, project in um, uh, Firebase storage. We are going to tell this directory, hey, I would like you to create a child, which in this case is going to be a file. Uh, sorry, well, not create. I'm, I'm, I am addressing a child. So uh, this is just like um, you know, creating a file object using a path. Here we are creating a, a cloud file object using, using uh, this part of the path. And this is the other part of the path. This is the directory, and this is the, the file name. And then we're going to do a delete operation on this. So, you know, in the notebook case, we created a file object and called delete. And in uh, the cloud case, we are uh, creating a storage reference and calling delete on that storage reference. And then just as in the local case, we had to test uh, if we succeeded or if we failed and, and sort of do something. Um, here we have an on success listener and we have an on failure listener. That's a common um, idiom for Firestore. And in this case, we're just, we're just logging stuff. Um, we could probably throw up a toast or a snack bar to say like, hey, something went wrong. Do you want to retry? Um, ultimately, uh, a lot of um, uh, sort of network connectivity issues, uh, the better, the, the less you have to inform and involve the user, the better. Um, you probably want to retry these things on your own. Um, but uh, for the purposes of this course and uh, your project, it's perfectly fine to just log these things and sort of keep track of them uh, on your own and have uh, simple, um, you know, reasonable behavior in the case where you don't have failures. So that's delete. Um, to actually create a file is a little, little, little bit more interesting. Again, just like um, in the um, in the local file case, you know, we have to. You, you want to get a directory, but in order to get a directory through Android, you have to sort of ask Android, like, hey, where do you, where should I put um, images? You know, do I, do you have a directory for my application? And, and then, you know, if you need to give permission into that directory to another entity, like the camera, you have to go through some effort to create a, a URI. Here, uh, we're grabbing a local file, uh, which the camera uh, I mean, we, we actually have to do that, that whole thing. I'm not going to go over that here, but there, there's a video on how to take pictures. Uh, the picture, the camera app ends up writing a local file that's in our um, uh, apps sort of directory. 
uh, picture directory. We, we are going to grab a reference to that local file, create a URI, and pass that URI uh, to, um, um, uh, to, to Firebase storage. Okay, so how do we do that? The first thing we have to do is we have to say, hey, um, we know what the local file name is. What is the remote file name? The remote file name is our uh, root directory and then the images subdirectory and then create this child means create a file within that directory. And the file is just gonna be named after this UUID, which is a string. This is where we could have made this uh, UUID.jpg. That would have been fine. We could add additional uh, metadata into the file name if we thought that was appropriate. We would do that here. Uh, once we have that, we have to create uh, the metadata for this file. And so there's this storage metadata, which is a, a Firebase storage thing. It's a builder. And the, the main thing we have to set is the content type, which is image slash JPG. And this is sort of like a MIME type or a media type. You might, uh, there's, you know, text slash plain. There's all, all sorts of, of uh, these content types. Um, and it allows um, other applications interacting with these files to know what kind of file it is uh, in a way that is independent from the name of the file. So for local operating systems, it's become such a, a convention that you use the file extension as the type of the file. It, you know, and that's a good convention. Why not? Uh, but we can't rely on that in the cloud, and so we have to set the content type so that uh, well, we don't have to, but it, it's a good practice to set the content type so that when we're looking um, uh, at these files with a web browser, it knows how to display them. Okay, so we have the data, which is the, the file. We have the metadata. Now we want to upload the file. So uh, this is the reference to the file. We're going to put the local file with this metadata into uh, the storage, into Firestore storage. Now you might think, uh, you know, when we when we do uh, these calls uh, for the local file system, when the call returns, the file has been created. Well, we can't do that with the cloud because uh, creating a file can take seconds, and we can't pause for that amount of time. So when we want to create a file, we actually get back something called an upload task, and the upload task is in the background going to upload the file, and if your uh, internet gets cut off in the middle, that upload task will fail. Um, and we have our uh, failure and success listeners here again. And if we fail uh, at this point, you know, we're just going to log things. But if we fail, I'm going to delete the local file on the theory that, you know, I'm not going to retry later. Um, of course, in a, in a real application, you should probably hold on to the local file. You should probably retry. That, that's just sort of more hassle than I, I want to go through for this demo. Um, if we do succeed, there's going to be a callback that we want to tell uh, the rest of the app, hey, this, this photo, it, it uploaded. And uh, the reason this is here is to enable referential integrity, you know, our, our favorite uh, safety property for these sorts of apps. And what, what I mean by that is um, if I take a, a picture for a note, I don't want to add a reference to that picture. I don't want to add the UUID for that picture until I know the picture is safe on the server. So I'm going to wait for the upload to succeed, and only then am I going to change the note by adding that UUID. And so I need a, I need a callback that tells me, hey, that picture is safe and sound on the server. And then uh, I'm just going to, uh, after I uh, do that callback, I'm going to delete the local file because I don't need the local file anymore. The file is, is stored up on the server. Stored up on the server. Okay, um, upload succeeded. Okay, I already went over uh, delete. So, you know, create, delete, list. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I have a, a reference to the Firebase documentation. The Firebase documentation is actually quite good. And so, uh, you know, if you get confused, um, read the documentation. So the, the reason um, 
Firebase actually discourages this form of listing because their directories can get very, very big and they want to make sure that you can fit uh, the entire listing in memory. And so what they really encourage you to do is sort of say like, give me the first you know, 50 items and then uh, I, I get them and give me the next 50 items and uh, do your listing in that sort of interactive way, which is good practice for large directories. We know that uh, this directory is, not, is never gonna get, it's never gonna be thousands and thousands of images. And so we're just going to list it all at once. Um, and, uh, you know, we have our same uh, um, uh, failure and success listener. In uh, the case of uh, success, um, right, in the case of success, we ask to list these things. Uh, what comes back is this result, which uh, actually has um, a, couple of, uh, a couple of things in it. So it's got an item list. And the item list is the, the one that actually has the file names and that's what we care about. And so we, we print the size of it and uh, we do a map here uh, to uh, create the picture, sorry, to, to grab the name uh, from the item. I mean, if we, if we uh, let Android Studio do its uh, magic, so we take a list result. Yeah, so we have uh, items, which are storage references. We have this page token, uh, which is um, this way of doing uh, multiple listing. So it's it sort of, you do some listing and it gives you back a token and then you pass it that token and say, start listing from here. And then the prefix is, is uh, the directory, the sort of cloud directory word. Okay, so not so bad. And then uh, there is this one so, sort of, um, uh, utility function here, given a UUID string, it allows you to get a uh, storage, a Firebase storage reference. And you might think, gosh, this, this is maybe leaking the abstraction uh, because, you know, one of the things that we've done here is we're trying to uh, hide how the files are actually stored. But uh, this function in particular, uh, let's find the, the usages of it. It is, yeah, it's only used in the uh, view model. Uh, and the view model has a reference to the storage object. And when a client of the view model wants to display an image, it says to the, the view model, hey, uh, display uh, this image in this uh, image view. It thinks of images as being named by this string, this UUID. Uh, the rest of the app only sees this, this simple string name. And uh, the, uh, the view model translates that simple uh, string UUID name to a storage reference, which it then passes to Glide. And this, I gotta say, this is one of the cool things about Glide. So we're gonna take a quick look at Glide. If you remember, um, you know, for, your, for Reddit, we had Glide was uh, accessing images on the web and caching them for us and displaying them. It is going to do the same thing here, except it is going to interact with Firebase storage for us. Uh, how does it know anything about Firebase storage? When we uh, create the Glide uh, module, we have to register components and we register this storage reference blah, 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 this thing, factory, you know, look it up on Stack Overflow. Uh, and then uh, this is all we have to do. So we grab a storage reference, we grab an image view, and we say, hey, Clyde, go to town. Uh, and this is, you know, this is the, the power of Clyde. So not only does it know how to uh, fetch and cache uh, random URLs, uh, it also knows how to interact with uh, Firestore storage. So that's nice. And that is uh, sort of the sum total of our interaction with uh, Firestore storage, which is this cloud file system we are using to store images in our FireNote application. Thanks.